Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Department of Physics. Ha ha ha. This is everything you always wanted to know about nursing. So welcome. Uh, we have a number of presentations this morning, and you are going to hear a whole bunch of different pieces of information that will be helpful. And some of it may confuse you initially, but I can assure you that we have lots of time after our session today for you to ask questions. So I encourage you to do so at the end of the session. So welcome. If you weren't in the first session, my name is Kevin Walmsley and I'm the Associate Dean of the Faculty of Health Sciences, of which nursing is a very important part. So I have a, a little bit of information for you. Yeah, that's me. <coughs> I would just like to uh, provide a bit of an overview on the admissions process, on residences, uh, and then you're going to get the experts in to talk about the nursing program itself. And uh, we have a wonderful professor who's going to tell you about the program as well and what it means to be a student. And then we have some students who are going to explain their experiences to you. So what's going on in your world? Well, most of you are applicants or plan to be. And so we have sent out some offers of admission already. They are smaller rounds in January and March. And as you can see, the first ones were just based on grade 11 marks, second ones on grade 11s, and the ones that you had completed by December. And now the majority of you will be waiting for your offers of admission. So don't panic. It will come. Okay? That's not till May. And that's going to be based on grade 12 marks. Um, so the majority of offers are still yet to come. So no need to panic. <coughs> And as you know, um, before you applied, we take a look at the six course average um, based on your grade 12 U level courses um, and the remaining highest level courses. And so you have your course prerequisites for nursing and all of those uh, grades will, of course, count towards your overall average. Um, and of course, you need to successfully finish your high school career. So once you get your offer, you know, don't go away and go to sleep. You need to keep your grades up. Um, you will need to provide acceptance to Western by June the 1st. So don't let that deadline go by. That's very important. Once it's gone, it's gone. And your residence offer must be taken up by July, or pardon me, June the 3rd, two days later. And remember, it takes time to process your payment. Um, and you're required to put a deposit down so that we know that you're coming. So your $800 is uh, due on June the 3rd. <clears throat> so once your payment has been processed, then we can get into the business of um, finding out where your residence will be. And so we have many uh, residences, uh, places at both Fanshawe and Western um, for you to reside in your first year. We have nine different residences at Western uh, with three different room styles. And as I mentioned this morning, I graduated from this program, not nursing, but from the Faculty of Health Sciences uh, program of kinesiology 30 years ago. And I stayed in one of those residences. And it was a traditional style residence. I was lucky enough to get my own room. I didn't ask for one. Um, and we had uh, shared a washroom uh, between us. It was an all men's residence at the time. Um, and we have a number of different combinations of residences that are both theme based and they can be gender based. Um, and they can be even nursing based, um, depending upon your selection. And so you will get to choose and put all of your choices in order, whether you want a traditional style that I just described, a suite style where you would have uh, <clears throat> your own bedroom, you would share a washroom with one other person, and you would share a common area with four people. That's a suite style. Or you could have a hybrid style where, where you would have a roommate um, and you would have a, uh, a shared washroom. So that's hybrid. So three different styles of residences. Every student is guaranteed a bed in residence in first year. So it's a lottery. And to double your chances, if you have a friend who's going to Western or plans to go to Western, then select them as a roommate and make the same selection on your choices. And you'll have twice as many chances of getting that residence that you want. So there's a hint. Um, so you have the opportunity to, to select, and then you will be pulled by lottery. So we try to do the best that we can to give everybody what they want. <clears throat> but we don't always win the lottery. Money. Yes, it costs money to go to university. But 
if you have particular grades, we'll give you money and you don't even have to apply. And in fact, most, if not all, nursing students at Western will receive money because you will have an 88% average and you get $1,000, just like that, right off the top. And isn't that nice, moms and dads? I still have one child in university and money from the university is a good thing. If your grades are a little bit higher, um, up to uh, our 95 percenters get $2,500 a year for a total of $10,000 over the course of your four years here. So the automatic scholarships begin at 88 percent and you don't have to apply. Um, and those scholarships, of course, will be based on how you finish up at the end of June in high school. There are bursaries available as well for students in financial need. Um, so there, for more direct information on financial need and bursaries, uh, the Office of the Registrar has a desk set up at the University Community Center right now. But our principle is if you have financial need, we'll do our best to get you money in addition to your OSAP. So there are many bursaries available and we will do our best to look at your circumstances and to get you some help uh, so that you can attend university. <clears throat> and as you can see here, um, there's an online application that's due in the third week of July. Our National Scholarship Program, I'm saying this because uh, this is for those of you who are in grade 11 and wish to apply next year, or perhaps some of you in the class, uh, because you're such good students, you've already applied to the National Scholarship Program. Those applications come directly to me, and we have a committee that evaluates those. And we pick our top students, and then they go into a university-wide pool, which the whole university evaluates. And then in April, we bring you in for personal interviews. And we'll probably bring in 50 to 60 students from across campus uh, who will compete for these very lucrative scholarships. And in the past, nursing has been very successful in obtaining these scholarships. And we have a couple of named scholarships in nursing as well. They can be $30,000. They can be $65,000. So if you're in grade 11 and you're a great student and you have um, a lot of community service activities, if you volunteered a lot, if you're a high achiever, you should apply for one of these awards next fall. Oh, look at that. 11 national scholarship win winners currently and two of them in are in the School of Nursing. So that's great. <clears throat> um, Summer academic, uh, we can skip through that, right, Denise, because you take care of that. The Western Guarantee, of course, you live in residence. We have admission scholarships. There's financial aid available. Um, yes, of course, you will get the, uh, the first year courses that you need. And we promise you a great experience uh, at Western. And I hope you've had the opportunity to get upstairs and see our anatorium where you'll have your anatomy labs and also our pride and joy, the clinical education suite or a simulated hospital ward. Do you know those beds weigh 450 pounds? Do you know when we built our building in 2005, the elevators weren't big enough for those beds and we had to carry them all up the stairs? It's true. But as you see, it looks like a hospital up there. I mean, the, uh, the equipment is real. That's what I'm saying. So in the Faculty of Health Sciences, uh, we want you to succeed. Of course, we're asking you to apply beforehand. We recruit you. When you get here, we take care of you. Our SOTs look after you as soon as you arrive and they move you into your residences, for example. We have the best academic counselors across the campus. Our health sciences academic counselors are the best. And Denise Lipson is your best friend for the next four years and a top ranked academic counselor, right? Right. So. You'll have one-on-one uh, -on -one counseling in the first year. And we initiated this not as a matter of academics. It was personal. We want you to get to know our academic counselors right away. And we want to know that your transition to university is uh, very smooth. Uh, so it's tough to move away from home. But we want to make sure everything's OK. So parents, we sit down with your son or daughter, um, ask them how they're doing. And we want to make sure that everything is going OK. And we want to show them where to go if things are not going OK. And Denise is always your first line of contact, no matter what. What else do we have? Uh, a number of uh, career fairs, speaker series, all kinds of things that, that go on to teach you how to um, firm up your resume to get ready for employment. Um, in Canada, there's such a high demand for nursing now, you're pretty much guaranteed a job when you graduate. Still correct, the cycle is still in our favor. 
Absolutely. So, and this is a darn good job. <clears throat> we have great faculty and staff members, and you're going to hear from uh, one of our best nursing professors this morning. Uh, another new thing is we've just switched all our email over to a new system, and as a result of that, all of you will get a free Microsoft uh, Student Advantage package, Microsoft 360, so parents, you won't have to buy software uh, for your sons and daughters. We initiated Western 1010 in the faculty last year, and this year, um, university-wide. Western 1010 Learn to Succeed is a series of 11 online units which will help you in your transition to university. We uh, teach you um, some good habits when it comes to attending classes and taking notes, teach you how to take notes, how to study for exams, how to write multiple choice exams, how to write essays, explain how to use the library system, um, teach you how to get medical accommodations, um, how to learn the appeals process and the student code of conduct, academic integrity, so we teach you not to cheat, of course. Many helpful skills that will uh, ease your transition between high school to university. And there it is. And it's an on, strictly online uh, units, accessible 24-7. And so that's all I have to say about infrastructure. And I would like to introduce our undergraduate chair and the associate director of nursing, Professor Thelma Riddell. Thank you, Kevin, and good morning, everyone. So nice to have you all here this morning to hear about nursing, and I appreciate that you ventured out into the fog to join us. Um, I was going to say, first of all, that our school, I guess I have to advance these slides, our school opened in 1920, the upper across, which is on the back. Okay, oh, I gotta go back, back. Sorry. These are very state of the art. I don't have these in my classroom. Thank you. All right, good. <laughs> so our school was open in 1920. And you know what I was thinking about the other day? That was only 10 years after the death of Florence Nightingale. So we tend to think, oh, that was a long time ago when uh, Florence Nightingale lived. But the founders of our school would have actually been alive in her lifetime. So it just is kind of exciting to me to think that our founders actually could have even known her or met her or seen her. Certainly not on the internet and certainly not on TV back in 1910. But uh, it's just sort of a neat little link to our past. Um, so our vision in the school is to be a recognized leader in innovative health education research and policy. And our faculty members I have to tell you, have awards and achievements that if I was to start listing them all, we would be here all day. Suffice it to say that um, their achievements are not only recognized in the scientific world or in journals or in international presentations or recognition books, et cetera, et cetera. Some of their accomplishments actually make the news, and I mean news news, that you would see on TV or that you would read about in your local paper. Just amazing uh, things like Dr. Cheryl Forchuk, who has a program where outpatients um, with mental health problems are actually monitored by cell phones, which are given to them as part of a large study, a huge study, a multi-million dollar study, in which these uh, patients are able to remain in the community and heal. And instead of being in an institutional setting in a hospital, they're actually able to reach a counselor or a caregiver just literally on their cell phone at any time of the day or night. And think of what that means instead of waiting for weeks and weeks for an appointment when they have an, an urgent question about a medication or they're having some sort of problem. And, and this is one of our um, proudest, I think, achievements that um, Dr. Cheryl Forchuk is one of our nursing professors and actually the um, associate director of our program of research in our school. We also, just FYI, have a chapter of an international nursing organization known as, known as Sigma Theta Tau International. It's an international honor society. So although that sounds like a sorority, it's not a sorority. Um, it was begun about 60 years ago in the United States. And our chapter here at the University of Western Ontario, called the IOTA Omicron Chapter, was the, own, was the first chapter outside of the United States. So we were the chapter that made them an international organization. They now have chapters, I think there's almost 500 chapters in 
85 countries around the world. So um, just a very um, important uh, thing to know that you as a student here, if you do exceedingly well in your studies, that you will be um, offered the opportunity to join that Nursing Honor Society, which again links you to all kinds of not only resources, but people and mentors and um, connections in the nursing world, not just locally, but worldwide. Uh oh, <laughs> I have to do this again. Okay, so ta-da, that big pile of dirt you see just to the north of this building is actually going to be the new nursing and FIMS building. FIMS is the Faculty of Information and Media Studies, but we just like to call it the nursing building. Um, however, we will be sharing that space with FIMS, uh, and that building is due to open in January of 2017. So um, if you start next year, you would be in your second year of your studies when we move into that new space. Very exciting. So. Um, right now, it's just artists' uh, conceptions, but it should be reality very soon. Oops. Alrighty, so I'm going to just talk a little bit about our program. <clears throat> we have two at the undergraduate level and four at the graduate level here at the University of Western Ontario. The Western Fanshawe Collaborative Program is the one that most of you are probably here to um, inquire about and I'm going to go into a bit more detail on that one in a minute. And I have my colleague um, from the Fanshawe site, Marianne Cron is here in the red. Um, she's my counterpart at that site and I'll explain that in just a moment. We also have a compressed time frame BSCN program and that program is designed for students who already have a substantial number of university credits. They for instance have um, pretty well all the sciences done and they have their electives done and they come into our program to do just straight nursing for 19 months and they, then they would uh, achieve the BSCN degree. That's also a very, very competitive program. They're, uh, right now only about 64 spots in that program and over 800 applicants and they're all just exceptionally um, qualified applicants. So we really do have huge demands on our programs. Then at the graduate level there are four of them, two at the master's level which you see there, the regular master of nursing and a master of science in nursing, uh, the nurse practitioner program and a PhD in nursing. So as far as the collaborative program goes, this uh, illustration is meant to help you sort of see the flow because some people don't quite get it uh, in terms of what happens if you start at the Fanshawe site. So on the left side of that little picture you see Western Western for years one and two and then three and four. So you have a choice. You can come here and do all four years at the Western site or start uh, like you would be on the right hand side there, then the first two years at the Fanshawe site and then come here for years three and four. So no matter which option you choose, you still graduate from Western and you have a BSCN degree uh, from Western. The curriculum is a joint effort. We designed it together. The two sites came together, the faculty from both sites. And years one and two, uh, the courses are the same at both sites. So it doesn't matter which site you start at, you will end up um, the same way at the end of the program. Now some students, and this is just sort of a little FYI because it's pretty intriguing to a lot of students that you may get the opportunity to actually finish your program. It's, you know that most school years uh, start in September and go till April of each year, so for all four years. There's a possibility in your fourth year that instead of waiting until September to start fourth year, you could start it in May. So you do your fall courses in the summer and your following winter courses in the fall. The long and short of it is you would graduate, or not graduate, but you would finish the program in December and you would be eligible then to write your certification exam and actually be out there looking for a job uh, well ahead of, of the rush, so to speak, when all other schools, including the rest of our own students, would be graduating in April. And that's, you know, it's a nice thing for students to get a jump start on the job market. Um, and it's very nice for our partners in practice as well because it sort of dilutes a little bit that onslaught of all the new graduates um, starting all at the same time, which I gather is quite a thing uh, in the spring. And then also, um, I would just wanted to mention about that, although it's kind of a good thing, you think, well, good, I can get done early, the downside is you don't have that summer then to work. So if you're counting on working in order to pay your expenses in school, um, you wouldn't have that option if you were studying all summer and into the fall. Um, so, but if you can do it, that's, that's a possibility. That has been happening for about the last six or seven years and we never know for sure if it's going to be happening each year, but very possibly that will continue. And I think that was a group this year, I think we're having 80 of our roughly 240, 250 students having that option. So, just FYI. 
So when you get done the program, a lot of um, students think, well, when I'm done, I'm going to be a registered nurse. At the end of the program, you'll have a Bachelor of Science degree in nursing, but you will not be a registered nurse until you write the certification examination. And that is um, to, to uh, register you to license you with the College of Nurses of Ontario. The College of Nurses of Ontario is not a college where you learn to be a nurse. The college is our regulatory body. So you may have heard of the College of Physicians and Surgeons of Ontario or the College of Physiotherapists or Occupational Therapists. Where the, our college governs our profession as nurses and also they um, provide or give us when we meet the requirements um, our license to practice. So when you finish the program, you still have to write what is now called the NCLEX. The, the words are spelled out there, National Council Licensure Examination for Registered Nurses. Um, and that exam, it's kind of interesting now because it used to be that it w there was this sitting three times a year. It was written in February, June, and September. Now the way the NCLEX is, there's a permanent writing center in London and anybody that is eligible to write can actually just book a time and go there and write at any old time because the questions are different for everybody. It's a huge database of questions. It's all electronic. You sit there on a computer answering questions. And, um, and so it doesn't matter. You could be sitting there with your friend right beside you and it wouldn't matter um, wh what you're getting. That person is not getting the same thing. And you could be done in two hours and the next person could take six hours. It's a really complicated process, which I won't go into details on right now, but it's quite different in that really as soon as the student has done the program and is eligible for registration with the college, you can go ahead and, and do the um, exam. So far, we've only had the students from the fall who just finished um, the accelerated year four and did that thing I was just speaking about, the sort of the finishing early. Uh, they have written the exam uh, in the last month or so, and we've only heard back from 10 of them, but nine of the 10 passed, so we're pretty, uh, pretty happy about those results. And then the next thing you have to do is meet the competencies for entry level registered nurse practice. And you can find that document on the CNO website which I put up there, the CNO.org. And those are 100 sort of general statements about nursing practice and the way you have to be to be a registered nurse. Those are not things when you read it you're going to think, yikes, it's, it's pretty, um, it's a, not an easy document to read. It's, you know, pretty detailed and, and pretty lofty language, but the bottom line is those 10 things, those 10 sort of overarching statements about your practice will be met by the time you finish our program. We make sure that they are, um, the elements of them are included in all the courses, so it will be very clear to you at the end that you have met all those competencies. And the last thing I want to just talk about is the requisite skills and abilities for nursing practice in Ontario. Um, that's a document I really hope you will go to the CNO website and actually check out. Um, it's, it's a document that was created by the college specifically to help um, people like you or anybody who had an interest in nursing to understand, well, what does it take to be a nurse? What do I need other than obviously very high marks in, um, in your studies now? Uh, and uh, you obviously have um, some ex expectations there. You also have to have these requisite skills and abilities that uh, are broken down into seven general categories and they are cognitive, communication, interpersonal, behavioral, psychomotor, sensory, and environmental. I just want to give you a couple of examples so you'll see why these things are important to pay attention to and say to yourself, is nursing a good fit for me? Because I may be very interested in what I think nursing is and I may have really high marks in high school, but when I read these um, descriptions of requisite or in other words required skills and abilities, do I have these things? So for cognitive abilities, for instance, it mentions um, problem solving skills and concentration, being able to concentrate, having arithmetic skills and abilities, adding, subtracting, multiplying and dividing calculating ratios, percentages, and applying formulas. Now you'll notice it doesn't say here on a calculator. So even though um, you may be really skilled and very fast with a calculator or a computer and doing all kinds of calculations, to be a nurse you have to be able to add, subtract, multiply, divide, do fractions and decimals up here in your head, you know, even or with a pencil and piece of paper, but certainly not with a calculator. I see lots of um, 
mothers and fathers smiling, so I'm guessing we have some nurses in the room. <laughs> Would that be correct? <laughs> um, who know darn well that nurses have to be able to do calculations. Um, and it's not to say that you might not check your manual calculation with a calculator. You might want to make sure. You might ask a peer to double check it. But you know, it's too easy with uh, when you start to rely on electronic means of doing things. And you're pretty sure you hit the right keys, but what if you didn't? Or you got the decimal place in the wrong, wrong spot. You can give somebody a tenth of a dose that they were supposed to have or ten times the dose they were supposed to have just by where you put that decimal. And I'll just take it from the parents smiling that you know also that um, your students, your sons and daughters may not have had a lot of arithmetic lately. I know that a lot of you have used calculators since very uh, early on in your education, I believe in elementary school. So before you come into this program, if you're coming this fall, for goodness sake, please spend the summer practicing math. You can just get some um, little workbooks <laughs> at the local library or, the, or a bookstore and practice your arithmetic. It will help you immensely when you start doing calculations of drugs. I'm um, sad to say that this is, I, I am, if I sound like I'm harping on it, I am harping on it. Uh, would the three of you in the front row say this is good advice or not? Yes? You better say <laughs> Yes, they're saying yes. Um, and I know that I usually get a round of nods from the students because you simply have to be able to do it. There's no way around it. So just to sort of get that through your head that you need to be able to do math. Um, another thing is about behavior, behavioral requirements. One that you may not have thought of is that you have to be able to not only respond in situations that may be stressful or involve conflict, but you have to react appropriately to giving and receiving physical touch. Now that is the thing that you may think, well, hello, I would have known that going into nursing, I'm going to touch people. But a lot of students um, have said they never really thought about touching people versus touching people, like people who are in bed and very ill and scantily clad, let's just say. And um, the physical touch and the close proximity or patients touching them, some students just find that kind of freaks them out a little bit. So if you're one of those people, again, I'm just asking you to think about that and say, OK, is this, is this the right fit for me? Is nursing really what I want to do? And last but not least, um, just the third example, because there are lots of them in here. Um, environmental requirements talks about working where there are noxious smells or distractions, where there is noise, where unpredictable behavior of other people could rattle you or distract you or make it hard to concentrate. So there again, think about all the things that, that nurses do and the kinds of distractions and interruptions they have in the course of their day. And, and ask yourself, is that me? Can I work in that sort of an environment or is it not? So are there any questions on that before I just, I don't want to go into the big question period, but anything about the requisite skills and abilities before I turn the mic over to Richard Booth? Okay, one quick one. Oh, that's a good question. So can you write exams in other provinces and, and be registered? That used to be the case that there was, um, well actually no, the, the the Canadian exam was always the Canadian exam and it still is with the NCLEX, but you um, actually still have to apply to be registered in those provinces. And it's not that it's impossible, but it's just their paperwork, which I'm not familiar with. Um, Denise has some experience with that because she's done some uh, record collecting for students. Anything you want to say about that? Yeah, you just have to apply and do their whatever it is they ask for, but certainly your degree would, would get you registered in any province as long as you pass the NCLEX exam. So now we have Professor Extraordinaire, uh, Dr. Richard Booth, and I think you'll be uh, enjoying hearing him talk about the courses, and then we'll have a question period at the end. Thank you. Well, it's uh, great to be here, uh, I guess, this afternoon. I look forward to this each year, um, and I thank the people for inviting me and the kind words they've said. So I'm Richard, and I get the privilege of teaching potentially you guys in the future. Uh, there's a bunch of students I have here, both upstairs and downstairs, that I've talked to this morning. Um, so I'm going to drive through in the next 10 minutes or so um, what I conceptualize your life, should you come to Western and be a nursing student, to be like over the four years. Kind of drive through what the courses look like in a kind of high level sense, but also lay out the opportunities. And I think sometimes we forget when maybe you're sitting in the position going, I want to go into nursing, but we forget that there's immense opportunity within nursing. If you had asked me 15 years ago, would I be standing here doing this today? Uh, I would have 
never been able to imagine that I would have this kind of a job. So I'm a mental health psychiatricist. I work clinically still um, as a prof at the school, but I still have a clinical practice as I do on the side. Um, so I work with clients who have a mental illness, long-term schizophrenia, bipolar and disorder. Um, and it's been an interesting, amazing clinical area to work in that I bring back to all my classes. Um, I'm also a researcher, so part of my portfolio is to do research, and I'll speak to it. I have a number of undergrad students who I'm working with right now on research topics um, related to technology and the little gizmos you have sitting in your pockets, which I'll speak to. Um, an educator, the predominant role I see, as my students would attest, is I, I teach classes. So I get to do a whole bunch of different classes on different topics that if you come to Western, you will, you will go through one of my classes. I can almost guarantee that. So it's, a, it's an awesome experience where I get to know people by first name and I am able to interact and, and kind of help mold careers as we go. And for anyone who knows me, and this, all my students will attest, I am definitely a coffee enthusiast. Um, and university has definitely taught me how to do that. So what does your next four years look like? Where are you going to be? Well, you've already seen this building. This is one part of it. We have a health sciences edition across campus, but we're going to have that new building soon, which is going to give us some amazing opportunity that we haven't had before. Um, we're going to have an increased skills lab, increased clinical sim uh, laboratory, and the ability to be kind of side by side between all the graduate programs and nurse practitioner programs and our research. So you're going to have lots of classes all over the place. You're going to have simulation. Um, everyone went upstairs, I hope, and took a look at the simulation lab to see where that, that's one of the best that I've ever seen in Ontario. And I've gone across Ontario to a number of schools. So we have a fantastic clinical simulation lab where you'll be doing tons of experiences. We don't throw students into clinical environments until they're ready because we go through those clinical sims. Um, we also do evidence-informed practice. So we just don't set you free out into the, in the world to give out medications without thinking and knowing how to think and rethink, how to look at evidence, what is knowledge, what isn't knowledge. Medications, we do it all from an evidence-informed. So we use research to underpin how we teach and also how we want to deliver care. And finally, opportunities. That's one thing that I found when I was a student no one really ever talked about. And I think that's probably and people just laugh so that I guess they don't get to hear my opportunity speech now. Um, what is the best thing about this program? Does anyone know how much you make upon graduation as a nurse to work as an RN, registered nurse? You make about $32 an hour in lieu of benefits, so add 14% if you're part-time. I do not know any other profession where you start at $32 an hour upon graduation. You can go talk to your other friends and other programs at Western. I guarantee you they do not have an outcome of $32 an hour. So just starting at that point, your four-year investment here is an amazing opportunity to start into a career where your remuneration right out the gate with unlimited, I will say, unlimited career potential. And I hopefully can speak to that as we go through. So your first year of your program here, we really need to sensitize you to what nursing is. Now you might think, okay, I've watched a few TV shows on ER. I know what it, I know what it's about. I walked through the hospital a few times. But we, we take it right back. We talk about what the essence of nursing is, what the profession it is, and how we need you to become nurses, to encapsulate the role, to move the profession forward, to move healthcare forward as we go. So you'll do a lot of health promotion, a lot of health assessment. And you can see Laura, who, there's Laura, there's Laura. She's, she's actually a real nursing student taking pictures in this. Um, you'll be working in the clinical simulation lab. You'll be doing a lot of theory and a lot of courses to figure out what the nursing role is, to move it forward, and really understand why you're at the school. Second year, if you come to Western, you will get me. I can guarantee you that because I teach a lot in the second year of the program. Um, we have a health informatics in nursing course, which to be quick to describe is if you've ever played with social media, we're going to spend half a semester figuring out how to do that from a professional point of view. So we're going to look at Facebook. We're going to look at Twitter. We're going to see how it works for your clients because now they're all connected. We'll creep out other nursing students to figure out what they are saying, what they're not saying, and what they should be saying. We'll do those sorts of things. We'll play with technology, electronic medical records. Um, it's, it's a fun class to do. We'll really explore how to be digital in a profession that is historically paper in the next 20 years. Uh, and if you were upstairs, you would have seen that we have, uh, we have a, a computer on wheels where we scan medications. That's all across London now. So healthcare is becoming really digital. So all those computer skills, all that techie skills, all that Facebook utilization that you, you know, potentially your parents told you to stop doing, we embrace that because we want you to use that because that is the next generation of nursing. The opportunities that didn't exist 20 years ago are here now. We also do a whole bunch of other classes. You'll get, if you come to Western, you'll have me for a research methods course where we'll look at how to generate knowledge, how to think about knowledge, how to critique it. And then you'll have other classes in the community to look at community practice, community as your client. So people who are living at home, people who have families who care for others and caregiver burden. So we'll take it 
out of the box, out of first year, into the community to really deconstruct how nursing affects not just people in the hospital, but also in the community. In the third year, we go really big. And my mother student, Rachel, just uh, um, went up the stairs there, but she's in third year, and she can probably speak to some of this. Um, no, she's second year, sorry. Um, we have a couple of other third years. Uh, Chantal would be able to speak. Um, we take it to a, a global perspective. We do courses in global. This is some pictures in Tanzania where we've had nursing students go for, for placements and do practicums. And they have a global health course. Opportunities start to really get much bigger. You'll, take, you'll be in acute care. You'll be at one of the hospitals, likely here in London. Well, actually, you will be at one of the hospitals here in London, um, whether it be Victoria or St. Joe's or, or um, UH. And you'll be on a, an acute care unit dealing with medicine and surgical patients. You'll take your skills you've acquired over those first two years and start to really translate them into some really sick clients. And let me tell you, having only been a nurse for really about 13 years now, the, the units that I used to work on as a student, I went back to them about a year and a half ago. My goodness, the changes that I've seen just in the last decade between the clients that I used to deal with as a student versus the student that clients you deal with now are completely a million times further down the pipe in terms of health conditions. So you have a really, really acute place that you're going to. You're going to be dealing with people's lives. Um, so we want to make sure that you're ready before we send you out there, which is why we say it's a third year. And then in fourth year, this time last year, I was really embracing my coffee enthusiast uh, hat uh, because my wife had just given birth to a child about six days prior to doing this presentation. And as you can see, that's the image there. Um, I took at about five o'clock, about six o'clock in the morning with my daughter. Uh, that was on March 2nd of 2014. And in my time, because unfortunately my wife, child had a hand above her head, kind of wrapped up in court, did not want to come out the normal way. So uh, we had a little bit of a longer hospital stay than we would have liked. But I had three Western nursing students take care of us in my about two and a half, three days, my wife and daughter in this hospital. You want to talk about a humbling experience. Amazingly humbling experience because I met a student who I had as a, as a small group clinical um, in that recovery room and this talking to her at four o'clock in the morning. Um, and it was a really great experience to see that the knowledge, skills, and judgment that people have come, they've grown into nurses. So three nursing students I had as students became my nurse through the day. Um, that could be you. We're all, we are all recipients of healthcare, we're all health consumers, and everyone sitting beside left, right, north, south of you will eventually need healthcare in some way, shape, or form. You could be that person to do that. And this is really where it starts. So it takes four years to get there, but you can see very quickly my career came full circle to becoming a, a user in a very acute situation. Now, there's other things. Let me talk about the opportunities. Though the two people who left don't get to hear the opportunity to speak. $32 an hour upon graduation is where you start. But that's limitless after that. If you want to work in different countries, go for it. You write an NCLEX. That means you can work in the States. Not saying suggesting you want to work in the States or go down there. We'd like to keep you in Canada. But you have that portability. Any other province, territory in Canada, same thing. You just do their paperwork from their college point of view. Um, I have friends and colleagues who work in Australia, England. Um, and they're not coming back because they've, they've met partners and they've married off there. So they're, they're not coming and going. But it's, it's amazing the portability you have with a nursing. Uh, you'll probably recognize Cassandra here, um, um, Chantel rather, um, who's uh, worked with me in October at a big presentation for all the public health units in Ontario. She was part of my informatics class last year. So I take students around, and we do research opportunities, and we talk, and we inter and interact. And they were actually, Cassandra and Chantel were my Twitter users. They pushed Twitter. Uh, I made them tweet. We, we got them to tweet the entire day as part of a, a conference that we put on. So, like I said, we want to embrace your social media skills and your knowledge of, of technology. That's where the future is going. So unless we embrace it within a, a curriculum, we don't know what we can do. Another presentation I did back uh, for an e-health workshop in 2013, had a pile of my, uh, my CTF students who were out there. Um, really what it comes down to, we have a curriculum here that's concept focused. So we're not going to focus on drilling content into you as, as much as we're going to give you parts to put together. And in over a four year period, you'll have enough understanding to become a generalist practitioner as a registered nurse. That's where we want. We're not going to train you to be that nurse that you might have saw that was a 25 years experience in the cardiology unit that you potentially visit. We're going to give you enough to get you started. And then after that, the career is limitless. I, I would, I, I'm pretty sure because I, once again, because of Facebook, I could find out from my graduating class, a quarter of my 100 graduating class are now nurse practitioners or working in a clinical nurse specialist. So they're either in a management or education position. So when a quarter of my class is now essentially a nurse practitioner, they're handing out medication, prescribing, and also your role as a registered nurse, we're going to be able to prescribe meds soon. 
the Ontario government's talked about that. Nurse practitioners, they've taken the scope off of what they can and can't prescribe. So your role, future nurses in Ontario, is uncanny. Uh, and it's really an untapped resource that all you got to do is just go talk to your friends who are applying to other programs, not in nursing. Ask them what they'll make upon graduation per hour. And I think uh, a bit of a difference will be there. So we're going to have a new building, 20, uh, 2017. I'm really looking forward to it. We'll have an increased clinical sim. Uh, my office is just across from, uh, from UH, so I get to watch a big orange helicopter take off every day. Um, you want to be a flight paramedic nurse, you can do that also. There's the opportunity where you can go, whatever you can fashion, whatever you can conceptualize in healthcare, you can be that role. And that's the thing that I'm not sure that's as we convey in our professional material. What you think you can be, you can do in nursing. Um, this degree is portable to the private sector, it's portable to the healthcare sector, it's portable, it's portable everywhere. Because you become a nurse with a healthcare background. What you tag onto that is your own prerogative. So, I get to do this for a living. I, I would like to suggest I have one of the best jobs in the world. I get to work clinically, then I get to talk to young, smart people about their future career and opportunities. I really would like to be a part of your move forward as well, all the other students and faculty and staff we have at the schools of nursing here between uh, Western and Fanshawe. So if there's any other questions that we have, I am happy to, uh, to entertain, but I will be kicking around probably on the outside and happy to chat with anyone about questions that they may have about the program. So thank you very much. Why take our word for it? I would like to introduce now people who are in our program, our students. And they're going to tell you what it's like to be a nurse at Western. Please, come forward, introduce yourselves. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shari D'Souza, and I'm a second year nursing student here at Western. Uh, I'll just take okay. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel Karras, and I'm also a second year nursing student at Western. Hi, my name is Akua. I'm a third year student, and I started at the Fanshawe site. Well, you've already seen my face several times today. <laughs> Just great. <laughs> but anyway, my name is Laura, and uh, I think these pictures are probably going to haunt me for the next like 10 years here. But anyway, and I'm a fourth year nursing student. <laughs> Okay, so I'm in second year, but I'm just going to speak to you guys a little bit about first year since that's what you guys are going to be going to. Um, just to start, uh, a little background about myself. So I actually never really wanted to become a nurse. Like my first Western was always my top choice. It was just I was accepted here for um, medical sciences and health sciences, and I kind of just applied to nursing as like, I don't know, I just, uh, just did it one day. and. So I consider myself an anomaly in that sense, and I would not change it for one bit. Like, it was the night before the deadline, and I'm sitting from the computer with my mom, and I'm like, I really don't know what I'm going to do, and I end up choosing nursing, and I would not change that for one bit. Like, the program here is phenomenal, which you've heard so much about already. Uh, the experience, just Western as a whole, is insane. It's amazing. Um, something that you really don't get at other places, Western and Fanshawe. Uh, or like Funshaw, like most people like to call it. Um, I'll go there too. Sorry. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. So in terms of first year, you guys get a lot of um, theoretical base on what nursing is. How Richard was explaining to, uh, in the previous slides, and I feel like a lot of people come in and then they're like, oh, like we don't get to do clinical placements in first year as opposed to other universities, and then they see that as a downside. I think that's the best thing about this program because you, I would not have been prepared going into any sort of clinical uh, situation. So first year is where you really learn to like get all your foundations, get everything. Like in the first month, you get to uh, purchase a stethoscope and a blood pressure cuff. It's just super cool. You do all the physical assessments the whole year, and you're like, wow, like this is like awesome. Um, yeah, so it's a lot of that, a lot of theoretical work, but everything just comes together as a whole in second year, which Rachel will be talking more about. Um, but also in first year, you have anatomy and physiology. So it's what I would say about the program first year, it's just very comprehensive of everything. And you get um, this, a solid, a very solid foundation for what you need to know uh, in your coming years and what you're going to need to know as a future nurse. Um, just as a little side note, I guess I was also, in terms of residence, I know a lot of you might be thinking about that. Uh, I lived in MedSid first year. And this year, I am a resident staff at Ontario Hall. And the 
experience um, for that has just been amazing, unparalleled. So I could answer any questions about uh, residents that you guys have specifically later. And yeah, they're like um, Kevin was explaining earlier, there are a lot of different choices. Some people were asking like, oh, what if it's like noisy? You have quiet floors, you have nursing specific floors, you have uh, gender specific floors. So there's a lot of options out there. But yeah, so if you guys have any more questions, you could ask me about those specific later. So and now Rachel's going to talk about second year. Hi, everyone. So I'll start with just a little bit about me. I'm actually from London. So I do live at home. I still live with my parents. They're really happy about that. I don't think they could have let their baby go to residence so early. Um, so if you have any questions about living at home, feel free to ask me. It's definitely what you make of it. Don't feel stifled because you live at home or you want to live at home or that's just kind of what the constraints happen to be. Um, I've definitely made the best of it. I've been on council these past two years and living at home has actually helped me save money and I've been able to go to Peru and New Orleans in the past year. So that's been really amazing and I've just, I've loved it here and I haven't regretted it one single day. Um, I kind of ended up, just like Shari, ended up in nursing haphazardly. I never, I know some people think, especially if they grew up with nurses in the family, they were like, I'm going to be a nurse. But for me, that wasn't really it. I knew nursing was kind of a safe bet with the job market. So I went with nursing and like I said, haven't regretted it one single day. So I'm so glad I've been in this program, I've met amazing people and just been able to do some really awesome things. So I'll talk to you a little bit about second year. So second year is split up into two sections. So your first section is considered supporting health. And your second section is considered com your community is commu family and community placements. So the first semester is behind Laura. And you can see Laura and Justin over there. So that's in your simu simulated clinical education suite. Like Richard said, it really is state of the art. And it's amazing learning experience. I couldn't imagine going on a hospital floor and just having to do it off the bat. Like that gives me anxiety just thinking about it. Um, the simulated clinical education suite, you're in a group of six students and you have one clinical instructor and you're paired up and you have a patient for the four hours that you're there. You start off, you get to kind of debrief with your instructor and then the end, and this is absolutely amazing, you get feedback from your patient and you get feedback from your instructor. So you're able to reflect on your practice and next time go back and do it better. So it's a really great learning environment. Um, there is pressure, but it's not the same pressure when you're when it's real life. So I've really um, flourished in that kind of environment and I hope that you would too. Um, second semester you switch off and you do communities and families and that's really cool because I've really had a chance to apply the theories that I've learned in my first year and a half to families. So for example, we're talking about the logic model and how you plan out interventions. So right now we're doing a community health fair to help connect the citizens in our community with uh, social services. And so we're using the theories, like the change power to change model, um, actually in our placement. So that's really cool. Um, your clinical instructors beside you each step of the way, helping you to reflect upon your practice, helping you to grow more. And so you definitely take the opportunities that you're given and you can definitely make the most with it. I haven't regretted this choice for a single day. Like I said, this is the third time, but it's just been wonderful. So I'll pass it off to Akua. Hello, everyone. So my name is Akua. I'm originally from Toronto, Ontario. And like Rachel, I did live off campus my first year. I lived with a parent. So, um, Unlike um, my counterparts, I actually knew I was going to be a nurse right away. I decided very early after my father had a health scare when I was in um, high school. So I kind of knew right off the bat that nursing was the choice for me. I applied all over Ontario. And then one day he was like, hey, Akua, do you know that there's a university here in London? And I was like, well, Western's a thing. So actually, during March break open house, I came as well. And I absolutely fell in love with the campus. Um, I know many of you will also apply to many programs and with the marks that you have, you will probably get in. My best choice of advice for you is to make sure that you go somewhere that not necessarily like has the highest marks, but a place that you feel comfortable. I would have never thought for any reason that I would have come to Western until I physically came on the campus and walked around and fell in love with like how much it looks like Hogwarts because I love Harry Potter. And so like for me, that was really the selling point when they say that your um, like they provide the best student experience. Even living off campus, I found that that was amazing. I started at the Fanshawe side. It was my number one option when I applied. I didn't want to go anywhere else and do anything else. Um, I love the idea of collaborative education, having both the college and university background. And I absolutely loved being at Fanshawe. It was so easy to navigate. Even though it's, it's pretty big and it's not like separated like how Western is, I definitely found like a great sense of community. Um, we were there were times where there was just eight of us or 15 of us and then there was another class where there was all of us. And I think it was just really 
having people who were so like-minded and were in the same boat as I was and necessarily weren't from London was really making those connections early on. But that wasn't to say that I didn't have those same opportunities at Western. I got involved in the Western environment very early on in my first year. And building up on the Nursing Student Association that I'm currently the president of has been one of the most amazing experiences ever. I've gotten to meet Shari and Rachel and Laura and so many other students that you really connect with on a personal level and like we just this past reading week we went to, Rachel and I went to New Orleans and we were like top bunk buddies and it was just a, a great experience so you definitely get a lot of experiences outside of nursing that really help help like shape your practice and when they say when Kevin said that your academic counselor is going to be one of your best friends like he's not kidding I like walk into Denise's office like twice a week like just to rant about things and it's like great because she sits there and he listens to me um, <laughs> and so um, definitely take advantage of all the opportunities that you have um, I'll just talk briefly about something called summer academic orientation Orientation. So this year, um, I will be a summer academic orientation leader for nursing. So if you do get accepted to the Western site, there will be a day that you will have in July. You'll have one of four dates to pick in July. And essentially, it will be a day when you come on campus. Um, and it's pretty much like a day in the university life. So we'll do tours of residence as well as the entire campus. And then you'll get to sit with Denise and myself and talk more about the program and what you'll be doing in first year. That's when we'll also help you with your timetable. Um, so I know for first year students that can be really, really overwhelming. Um, so we sit down with you one on one. We go through your choices. If you come to summer academic orientation and you don't have your schedule done, please don't freak out. Like it's not too big of a deal. The good thing about first year is that all of your classes are mandatory, so you're guaranteed to get all of your classes regardless. Um, so it's just really the amount of picking like one option as opposed to the other option. Um, you might at one point probably have a night class. Don't freak out. You will survive. Um, some professors, depending, they don't really mind if you eat in class. I'm an avid person who eats in class. I can't survive usually. Um, you can usually bring like tea or anything. So if like that's something that you've had like issues with, like I know I do. Um, you will survive. Um, it's the same at Fanshawe. It's definitely like a big sense of community. So I definitely like suggest that all of you apply to both sites. Um, get also have an opportunity to go to Fanshawe and see what it's like. Fanshawe's open house is on March the 28th. And Marianne, as well as other students who are at the Fanshawe site, will be there speaking about their experiences. Our clinical education suites are pretty much set up in the same way. And I remember last year um, when we were having when we were in the labs, like they actually taped us at like videotaped us at the same time. And I'm telling you, going back and listening to yourself on video is one of the most awkward things ever. Um, you just like when you actually get to see what you did, it's just very like eerie. So like when Rachel was saying, like you really get to see the feedback of how you've improved. It's like it's real. So it's it's that was definitely a really cool experience. So I'll talk a little bit about third year. So um, having been at Fanshawe for the first two years, I switched over to Western this year and it's been an absolutely amazing experience. Like it definitely doesn't feel different like meeting 125 new people. It's like you all kind of were family from the beginning, which has been really nice. And so um, you will have clinical placement. So in terms of you being placed in London, there is an opportunity, well, depending on what you get, you might be placed outside of London. So for my um, placement in first year, I was placed at Strathroy Hospital, which is about 20 minutes-ish by driving outside of London and I absolutely love the experience. I love being in a smaller hospital, all the opportunities that we had. Our unit was surgical inpatient as well as mother baby. So on one of my shifts I pretty much just like held a newborn for like two hours and it was like the best thing um, until the dad came in and then I had to like give the baby back. But like <laughs> it was great up until that point. Um, so you definitely find that with smaller hospitals um, there's definitely like a lot of opportunities. So if at any point throughout your four years because you don't pick your placements they are given to you, there is a ton of variety. So regardless of whether you're in London at probably um, University Hospital or Victoria Hospital. Um, there is a lot of opportunity for you to get clinical experience in acute care setting. Um, and that's really where you find that you learn, you build on your skills from your first two years. So don't be discouraged about not having clinical in your first year. I definitely agree with both of them. But I feel like I definitely wouldn't have been ready. And like having those skills and building up to them, you really see the impact that it has with when you can finally connect concepts with 
actual learning. So this year, this semester, I'm actually at Mental Health at Victoria Hospital. And when Richard was saying the impact that you have on individuals with mental health illnesses such as schizophrenia or major depressive disorder, you really do see it. I definitely think that mental health is one of the most prevalent um, areas of nursing right now, especially with the high rates that definitely like the stress of the university can have on you. So it's definitely important to build those communities and those relationships with individuals and definitely like your nursing peers will, peers will definitely understand the stress that you're going through. So always pick a buddy to rant with. <laughs> Um, so I've definitely loved the experience so far and it's been absolutely amazing. You will find that wearing comfortable clothes like scrubs will get you through a 12 hour shift. Um, if you fall asleep in them, which I guarantee will happen to you without the four years, it's totally acceptable, like no one judges you. Um, so it's definitely been an amazing experience. Again, I encourage you to look at both sites and if you have applied to the Fanshawe site, please do attend the open house because wherever you choose, you want to make sure that it's going to be the best fit for you. Oh, um, so and on top of having your clinical courses throughout the year, this year is actually the first year that a global health practicum was um, introduced through our faculty. So this summer, myself as well as seven students will be going to Rwanda for the month of May. Um, and so that was through an application and like an interview process. So um, we're really, really excited. Um, and it's something that the faculty has been hoping to do for a long time and that's paired with our global health course that will be mandatory in your third year. And it's an amazing course. You learn about policy. Um, you learn about um, ethics, which is really big. You also learn about non-governmental organizations and the impact they have on helping people, especially after natural disasters. So if any of you do have um, an interest in international nursing, um, that's an opportunity for you to do at the end of your third year. As well, you can also do opportunities through Western International, which pairs you um, in different places around the world as well. So if you have any other questions about like being involved or my Rwanda trip coming up, please come speak to me after. Are you tired of looking at my face yet? <laughs> anyway, I'll, uh, I'll keep this short. I'm in fourth year and I'm actually in the old program because I'm a dinosaur. And so um, I, uh, the courses that I uh, have taken in my year will be different than what you're doing now. But in fourth year, second semester, you do your consolidation, 432 hours of clinical. And so that will be the same in the new program, of course. So I guess that's what I'll touch on. Um, a little of, I guess, uh, why I went into nursing. Um, I definitely waffled for like a very long time as well um, and to be honest in the first year or so I wasn't sure I was like if nursing was the best for me but um, I have fallen deeply in love with it and I've fallen deeply in love with such um, sort of um, a different aspect of it so uh, Western has given me so many incredible opportunities uh, countless and I've really gotten interested in policy and politics and I really later I think want to do a master's in health policy and get into like Ministry of Health and things like that. So I actually wrote two papers this year on physician assisted suicide and how we would go about legalizing that in government. And then very interestingly enough, <laughs> this semester they legalized it almost exactly the same way that I wrote in my paper. So it was pretty cool. <laughs> so that's definitely my big passion. I'm actually going to Ottawa in two weeks uh, to spend a day in Parliament with MP Hetty Fry who's a physician and we can talk about, uh, and it's actually a women's issue network trip through Western and so it's talking about barriers for women in politics, um, but I'm hoping I'll slide in some like health policy with Hetty Fry and we can chat about that. <laughs> So anyway, so no, honestly, uh, as Aku and the other girls have mentioned, Western's opportunities are endless and nursing is absolutely an endless career. Um, don't ever think that it limits you because it opens up more doors than you can imagine. Um, but anyway, so clinical stuff, the, the fun stuff. So I'm at Norfolk General Hospital right now in Simcoe. I know that seems like a ways away, but my aunt and uncle live there, so it, I, I put it as one of my options because um, the smaller hospitals, like Aku has said, great opportunities. So um, I have been able to, um, I'm in the eMERGE and the ICU both, I flip between the floors, but I've been able to um, deliver babies. Um, we had a woman come into the ER who was um, 
giving birth to twins, and they were like, well, just go upstairs with her, and I got to, I got to help deliver her beautiful twin babies and hold them, and they were so tiny and gorgeous. Um, I've been able to see several surgeries as well. I had a patient who was getting an appendectomy laparoscopically, and I just like went up to the OR and watched, and it was really cool. The doctors showed me all inside her stomach and all her different organs and everything. They're like, yeah, check this out, and like, they're like moving the little camera around, like, uh, this woman, so nice of her to let me <laughs> sit in her surgery. And um, so, uh, so it's been really interesting. Um, what other interesting things have I done? Um, well, I've been doing IVs like crazy. So now whenever I look at people, all I see is like their veins. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, you have really good veins. I could like get that in. So, and that's been really cool. Um, I've, uh, we got to stitch up a woman's head the other day. That was really interesting. She had a big gash. Um, We've had uh, lots of interesting mental health patients. It was full moon this past weekend when I was working, so it's totally true what they say about the full moon. We were just packed to the rafters in the hospital all weekend, actually. So anyway, um, what else? It's been so incredible. I'm almost done. I only have seven shifts left, and then I'll be writing my licensing exam. Uh, fingers crossed I'm going to pass. So I've been studying. We will see. And um, then I'm planning on starting my career, so I've already been applying to jobs. Um, I applied to several jobs at University Hospital here in London, and so the hope is to stay in town. I, I'm not going to move my life to Simcoe. They're a very, very small town, but they're great people. So, um, But yeah, it's... Uh, you know, just, yeah, just remember, I think the most emphasized is, is nursing is such an open door. And, um, you know, and, and Western is such an incredible opportunity. You know, when I was in third year, I was actually student council president as well of the faculty. And um, nursing was like, you know, it was, I was doing nursing, but like I was doing all these other things too. And, you know, we were chatting in the student life panels about the busier you are, I think the more you actually get done. So. Anyway, but uh, we've had a long chat here, so I'll, I'll let you all get back to the presentation. Well, we have great students. Thank you very much. Um, that brings to the conclusion the formal part of our presentation.